It's been a few weeks since we milked Ladybug because of our trip. This is our first morning back. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna have to size Luna up on her halter. The one I've been using barely fits. So, just in case she's had a growth spurt over the past few weeks, I'm gonna bring this one out. Ooh, it's cold. My hands are cold. Uh oh, this one's starting to do it. She's been doing it for us. But like successfully. She's been doing it for like weeks. She let you do it. She knew it wouldn't fit. Lunar. I'm always nervous after I haven't milked for a few weeks to come back into it. I got be up the night before like, okay, I have to milk this morning. I have to milk the next morning, get myself mentally prepared. But then I start doing it and it kind of all just falls into place. We're going on almost a year that we've been milking Ladybug. So her and I, we all kind of have a routine already. And the one thing I've been most grateful for this year that I've been milking is calf sharing. Dairy is one of those things that a lot of homesteaders hesitate to get into, and with good reason because it is a big responsibility to take on. But calf sharing or kid sharing, even with goats, is something that does allow you little, a little more freedom than conventional dairying normally would. <laughs> you see this cow? She stood like a brick. A good cow. Daddy! Hi, me. What a good cow. 
What are you doing? Now it did help that Betty came on the side that Ladybug could see. <laughs> if she came on her blind side, I don't think she would have been so calm. But at the last farm, the chickens would always fly up into the and roost right above Ladybug while I was milking her, and she didn't like that because it would be like behind her back where she couldn't see. We've been missing the milk, so it's nice to get back to it. And that means it's time to wean Luna. We'll do a video about that soon. And in the next two weeks, in about two weeks from now, I'll be watching to see her come back in the heat so we can rebreed her. We had just got back from our trip and she had a bleed off, so we missed her heat. I put my hand here because I don't want Luna latching onto those front two teeth. I save those for me. I let her finish out the back ones to get the rest of the letdown where all that cream is. But if she gets the ones I want, then she gets them all slobbery and yucky and I gotta clean it all again. Now, when you're dealing with a family cow, this is one thing that might raise some questions for, for any of the dairy people out there. Because it is very unusual to keep a calf on a cow for a year. Now Luna's going to be a year in a couple of weeks. At the outset, I wasn't, I didn't have the goal for her to stay on for a year. It was eight months for me because that's what the breeder suggested, eight months. Um, we knew we were going on a trip though, so I left her on. So it'll be a year. And you get a lot of dairy people who say, don't do that. That's not good. It's not good for the calf. It's not for, good for the cow. It's our first time doing this, so Luna's a big experiment for us, I suppose. <laughs> because she's coming into heat regularly, I know that she's a good size, so I'm not too worried about her breeding back. And the other big concern is their, how their rumen capacity will develop. There haven't been a lot of studies done on this for family cows, because obviously it's such a small group. They'll do it with cows from a, calves from a dairy to find out what their rumen rumen capacity is like after they've been weaned, what the best optimal time is for weaning. You know, for a commercial dairy, it's the goal is to make money. So you try to figure out how soon can we wean these calves so we don't keep putting milk replacer down them or milk. And that's understandable when it's such a, such a narrow profit margin. But for us, we've got one calf and she's our milker. So we've kept her on as long as we've needed to. Now we'll be weaning her soon. And over the next few years, we'll see how she does as a milker. We'll see if it's affected her in terms of health. She's a healthy, very healthy little calf. And we'll see how, it, how it's been for her in terms of rebreeding. So everyone will get to follow along and see how it goes. See what it's like when you don't win a calf until she's a year old. <laughs> our goals for our cows aren't going to be like a commercial production cow. We're not going for maximum production. We're going for enough to feed a calf and enough to give our family a couple gallons. And if we get that, we're happy. Can you pull her off? Come on, Loons. Come on back. You are a good mama. Come on. You are a good mama. You're both doing really good. You're a good cow. Everybody's done.
just have to move a tripod. And then I guess. Sorry. It's okay. Everybody can wait patiently. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, did I mess something up? Yeah. Okay. It's alright. Last time for that one. That's too small. Alright, come on. Notice all the construction noise in the background? That's the first thing the cows do in the morning. They go up and watch the trucks. <laughs> they love watching the bulldozer. That's where my, where my parents are building their house. It's not close enough where we can see, but we can hear the trucks going around. And the cows love to watch, because cows are nosy. Not unlike a couple YouTube viewers I know. <laughs> Just playing, but for real, yo. I love summer. But I don't love summer with livestock. The flies were so bad this year. Flies, mosquitoes, so bad. So it's nice coming into fall, the cool weather now. There's so many fewer flies. Let's go see how much we got. About a gallon and a quarter which is a little bit more than what we were getting right before we left so no loss in production and we got to take a vacation <laughs> YouTube does not promote all our videos to all our subscribers. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our videos, sign up to the email list by clicking right there and every Friday I send out all this week's videos to all our email subscribers.